in this tutorial we will learn about how to design a ring counter so a ring counter is a special type of counter in digital electronics so before we start coding in Verilog let us first understand its truth table so it will have four states which are q3 q2 q1 and q0 and the starting value of ring counter is always 100 and after 100 what happens is this one which is there it gets uh, start shifting towards right so this q3 value will be transferred to q2 q2 to q1 q1 to q0 and once we reach q0 this value is again given back to q3 so that cycle itself repeats again and again so next value will be this because one is getting transferred towards right so it will come like this next is uh, this one will move again one position towards right and last position will be 0 0 0 1 so these four cycles so these four cycles complete one pattern and after this because if you observe q0 is again connected back to q3 this one will again go back to the starting position which is q3 so again the pattern will become 1000 and same story will keep on repeating till the clock signals are coming so once let us also have a look uh, at the block diagram so let us take an empty page and let us uh, see this diagram so here four flip flops are there so if you observe uh, q3 is anyway connected to q2 and q2 is connected to this q1 next one and q0 to this and this q0 we need to take it back and connect it to d3 signal so in a way what we can understand from the logic is the q3 value will become whatever is q0 and q2 because it is connected to d2 and d2 is connected to q3 so q3 value will be transferred to q2 similarly this q2 will be transferred to q1 and this q1 will be transferred to q0 so now once we have got a good grip on the logic we can start writing the verilog code so like all verilog code this also begins with the keyword module and then you can declare your input and output signals so i write module and i can give the name as uh, ring because i'm designing a ring counter and clock and reset are anyway always there and we can give one variable to store the output value and i'm calling it as count and before itself you can keep and write and module so that we don't forget it later then you tell which are your inputs so clock and reset is my input and my only output is uh, count and i'll declare it as reg 3 down to 0 because i need 4 bits to store the value and now you can start your logic always at the rate of uh, positive edge of clock you can begin and first you can say if reset comes that is if reset value is 1 we will make our q as 1 triple 0 or count as 1 uh, 4 bit 1 triple 0 because if you remember just from my truth table uh, the starting value of ring counter is 1 triple 0 okay this value so and one more thing you can do here is because by default all register values will be in x state you can make it 0 at beginning to avoid that x state and next uh, after you have done with your reset in else part we can start writing our logic so you begin and end for this one else block and now you can write the logic so count of 3 will be storing the value of count of 0 because from that logic if you remember the 0 signal was given back to 3 
and I can just copy this line four times and just edit it and count of two will become count of three and count of one will become count of two and finally the last one is count of zero will become count of one so we are done with our uh, design code now what we can do is we, we have to just code our test bench code so we'll just uh, start writing here module ring underscore tv and end module and as we know like whichever signal is declared as input it becomes uh, reg in uh, test bench so just i'll write input as reg and whichever declares as output it becomes wire so wire 3 down to 0 count now first you can instantiate your code so ring dot and we will do port connection by order so we need to call the signals in same order so i'll call them in the same order and next I can start one initial block to generate my clock signal. So initial begin end, and always the starting value of clock is zero. And then I will write one forever saying that at every 10 nanosecond make clock equal to not of clock. So now my clock signal part is also over. Now I will generate my reset signal in another initial block. Why I am using another initial block is because it has a forever statement. So even if we write anything below this, it is not going to get executed. So we are taking one different initial block. And first you can call your dollar dump files for getting simulation waveforms. If these two files we don't write, we are not going to get the timing diagram generated which is very essential for our analysis of uh, Verilog code and dollar dump verse you can write 0 comma dot and next you can write one dollar monitor statement to print the values because there are two ways to analyze any output one is through waveforms and one is through seeing what is getting printed so dollar monitor will detect all the changes and it will print so first i am printing my time after that i can print my clock signal value then i can print my reset signal value and then i can print count value and i want to print them in binary that is i am using percentage b so for printing time just write dollar time comma and all these names of signal clock reset and count so i'll just copy and paste them here and i'll close my bracket and semicolon so i'll once show you the complete line also so be very careful about uh, these commas even if one comma is missing you will get a compilation error inside double quotes it doesn't matter it is your wish how you want to write but after ending this double quotes, these commas after every variable are essential, otherwise they generate error. So now first thing what I'll do is, uh, I'll give my reset signal. Because if I don't give reset signal, the ring counter will not go to the starting value. So I'll write has zero, first I'll give reset signal. And after some delay of 30 nanoseconds, I'll make reset as zero. So now I can start my operation. So in counters, there is nothing like separate input. Just we need to generate clock signal only. So just I will write repeat 20 times. And I will just uh, generate my clock. So at the rate, I can I am generating percentage of clock. And that's it.
so this clock will take care of everything and after this you can write dollar finish to end our code now remember that uh, as i told you in this pattern for getting one pattern four cycles will be consumed because we have to go from 1000 till 001 so it consumes four clock cycles to get one full pattern similarly i have given here 20 cycles so five times that pattern will come because in 20 clock cycles i can get that pattern five times so our code is also done here now what we'll do is we'll copy this code to one online verilog compiler eda playground and i'll paste it there and we'll run and check if any errors are there so i'll copy my test bench also and uh, you can select the tool as icrs verilog 0.9.7 and click on this open ep wave after run and uh, yeah let me just once run and check if any errors are there to rectify them okay so no errors are there so our output also got printed here neatly so if you observe here starting when we gave the count was 000 why because if you observe in fourth line we made all the count values as zero but the moment clock came when clock became one and reset also became one we went to the starting value of 100 okay and from here the pattern starts 0100 this thing same thing can also be observed in timing diagram so what we can do is we can shift reset up if you observe here you select the radix as binary but even after selecting radix as binary sometimes it is not showing us all the four bits like here it is showing three bits here two bits so just we need to click on this plus symbol okay just you enlarge it once and then you close it now it will show you all four four bits so it is easier for us to analyze now if you observe here when the first positive edge came at this point the signal or the count value became 100 and now at every positive edge this one is getting shifted okay so we can analyze it through like this also so i can draw and show you also like here 100 is there now if you observe that one is getting shifted to second position and now that one is getting shifted to third position and now it went to the last position so this is one pattern actually this four clock cycle still here and again that pattern gets repeated four times again 100 011 so this one is getting shifted and the pattern is like this first we get 100 after that 011 like this and then 0010 and finally this one goes till last so this is one pattern and after that one again goes back to the beginning state and same pattern again starts repeating so five times you will observe that pattern will come but this is how a basic ring counter is designed so if they ask in exam to write a verilog program for ring counter you can just write this code and along with test bench and you can write the true table so you can show the timing diagram also so this is how a ring counter is designed this is the main logic but remember that in reset state don't make it all zeros make it 100 okay this is the starting value of count uh, ring counter value so hopefully now you understood how to execute a ring counter thanks for watching